In IFR training, we talk a lot about the clean cockpit principle, which means making sure that every instrument and tool in use is synced and in agreement with everything else in use. Flying an unpublished hold in a Garmin 430 or 530 is a great example of why we should keep our cockpit clean. We're on an IFR route taking us to the Nottingham VOR, identifier OTT, and then onwards to our destination to the north. We're using the GPS to navigate to the VOR, which we're allowed to do during the en route phase of flight. The desired track, DTK, is 357 degrees, which we're following nicely as shown by the identical track. The VOR receiver is in GPS mode, meaning the needles on the NAV1 receiver will be matched with the GPS deviation indications. This will be true no matter what we have tuned on the dial of the OBS. Right now, it says 030 degrees, but to keep a clean cockpit, we want to set it to 357. This has no bearing on how we fly or navigate right now. Why would we add this extra step? Consider this curveball from ATC. November 518 Foxtrot Tango holds southwest of the Nottingham Vortac on the 240 radial. Expect further clearance in five minutes. We've been given a hold at our upcoming waypoint. First, what does this look like? We're holding along the 240 radial here. This is the inbound leg, a 60 degree track. Right or left turns weren't specified, so we're using the standard right turns. And then this is the outbound leg. We'll make a direct entry into the hold from here. Now, here's where we let the GPS help us with this and where the clean cockpit will really pay off. We're going to suspend our flight plan. We do this by hitting OBS, just like we would if we were on a missed approach. This has changed the GPS guidance from a direct track to the waypoint to a line along the OBS setting we have in, 357. So by cleaning up and matching the 357 track with what's set in the OBS, there's effectively no change when we suspend. What this function can now do is draw that pink line along whatever course we want simply by twisting the OBS knob, as we'll see when we enter the hold. We'll pass over Nottingham, and when the arrow flips from to to from, we start a turn outbound, heading 240. Now, because we've suspended the flight plan with the OBS enunciation on the unit, when we turn the OBS knob, watch that magenta line start to rotate. We're going to twist to the inbound course, 060, and that's where the magenta line will move to. It becomes the inbound course. When we roll out on 240, the outbound will be watching for the flag to flip from to two, at which point we could start to time one minute outbound as we normally would. When the minute is up, we'll turn inbound 060 degrees, and at this point we could follow the guidance of that magenta line to know when we're on the radial or need to correct. Both the needle and the deviation indication at the bottom of the unit tell us we're just about centered on the course. So there's no guidance for the outbound course, which is true of any hold, it's just the inbound course we're able to set with our GPS unit. The advantage of doing the holds using the GPS, instead of just calling up the VOR as traditionally done, is that it works for both holds at a VOR station, or on a DME fix, or a GPS waypoint. When ATC tells us to leave the hold, we can continue our flight plan by unsuspending it with the OBS button. We're now following a direct track to the VOR, after which our flight plan resumes with a turn onto our destination.